Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today after the 1000 subscriber special yesterday we will be having another tank review and looking at the AMX 1475 in the garage. This is a tier 7 French light tank, if we look at the tech tree we can see it's situated right here at tier 7. It comes after the AMX 12T and leads up to the 1375 uh, and leads up to the foot and leads up to the 1390. The AMX 12T was an alright tank, it wasn't amazing, but it was alright. And if you enjoy playing the AMX 12T, you will love the 1375 because it's basically, it takes the good things about the AMX 12T and improves its drawbacks. And that's why this tank's actually quite good. Now, it's got an autoloader gun and it's very, very fast, although it's not extremely fast for a light tank. It's very, very light, obviously, having no armor whatsoever. And it actually can devastate enemy tanks quite a bit if it gets, for example, their sides and rear. And actually a lot of people think this tank is primarily a scout, but it isn't. This tank is best used in a kind of a damage dealing, cleaning up role at the end of the game. So let's get stuck into the stats without further ado. First of all, it's got 900 hit points. That is very, very little. Uh, 900 hit points at tier for a tier 7 light tank, that basically means it will be able to take 2 or 3 hits from most enemies it faces and then go down. 900 health is not a lot and even for a light tank, that's very poor as it's French. It only weighs 15.4 tons, that's nothing. That's a bit more than its predecessor, the AMX 12T, but still, it's very, very light and nearly anything can ram you right back to your garage in this vehicle. You have to be very, very careful and a lot of tanks will try to go for the rams, especially for example, heavier light tanks or fast medium tanks that encounter you and try to, uh, for example, kill you before you reach the enemy base or something like that. You always have to watch out for enemies trying to ram you. This very, very light tank is driven by a 300 horsepower engine, which is actually quite a lot and that makes for a power to weight ratio of 19.49. That's very good. But for a light tank, it's still quite disappointing actually. For example, compare that to the Leopard 1. The Leopard 1, which is a medium tank, gets better power to weight ratio. So, yeah, there are light tanks in the game, or most light tanks in the game actually, have got a better power to weight ratio than this. And I'm not saying that the power to weight ratio is bad, but it could be a lot better. And it can sometimes let you down, for example, when you're climbing a steep slope or something like that. The top speed is 61 kph, which is very fast, but again, as light tanks go, it's not the fastest, and it could be a bit better. The traverse speed is only 40 degrees per second, which is, for example, if we compare that to the Chinese tank, um, which has got, for example, 56 for WZ132, yeah, 40 is actually not very good, and that's a real problem with many of these French light tanks, and also the medium tanks, like, for example, the Batshot, that they don't turn corners very well, and although you are very, very speedy, if you turn a corner, yeah, you have to kind of plan in advance and start to take the turn a bit earlier than for example you would in a WZ and that sometimes can be a real problem especially if you're trying to for example carousel enemy heavy or medium tanks. The armour doesn't count for anything of this vehicle really, it's only 40mm at the front and 20 at the side and 15 and 20 at the rear. So yeah the gun if, if shots hit the gun directly, they will sometimes bounce, but generally anything will go through hitting this tank. And also, one problem is that the engine is mounted frontally, that means that quite a few shots hitting this frontal part of the tank, he will set the engine on fire. The engine has got a chance of fire of only 15%, so that's alright, but still, the engine gets hit quite a lot. And also, crew members get damaged a lot, because this tank's only got three crew members, but they're all quite close to each other in the hull. Um, an important thing is that, for example, your commander is not only your commander, but for example, you're also your radio operator and your loader. So, for example, if your commander gets taken out, at the same time, your loader and your radio operator gets killed. So that can be quite a problem in this vehicle. Next, we'll come to the gun. And the gun is basically exactly the same gun as used on the AMX 12T. And right here we've got the gun on the AMX 12T and I'm going to quickly go through the research tree of the 1375 so that we can compare the two guns. Now, so on the left side we've got the 
gun on the AMX 12T and on the right side the stats of the same gun on the 1375 because they are slightly improved. Now it's an auto loader, 75mm auto loader, and it's got six shells in the magazine and the reload time between the shots is only two seconds with the 1375 rather than 2.22 on the AMX 12T and that means that you will be able to pump out those shots a lot quicker and be able to do quite a bit more damage in the 1375 over short time. The reload in the clip is a lot quicker with the 1375 as well, it's only 16 seconds rather than 20 seconds, that's a 4 second advantage and with 100% crew and vents you can get that down to 14 seconds which is really good. The penetration and damage values are obviously exactly the same and yeah they are alright but they could be better, especially the penetration, it's only 144mm, that's quite disappointing if you consider that this tank gets scout matchmaking and will be thrown into tier 10 games. Try penetrating a tier 10 heavy tank anywhere with 144mm of pen, that can be quite tricky. So the penetration, especially when taking shots at long range, can be quite a problem. The alpha damage is quite low, but considering that this tank can pump out 6 shots within 10 seconds, the alpha damage could count for quite a lot because basically it means that you can pump out that you can pump out roughly 700 or 800 hit points of damage within 10 seconds and that is really really impressive. Uh, the accuracy is quite good actually at 0.36, it's not sniping accuracy, but for a light tank of this tier, 0.36 is quite good. And the aiming time improves, it's now 2.3 seconds rather than 2.5 seconds which is also quite a welcome change because 2.5 seconds on the 12T was quite unnerving while 2.3 is acceptable on the 1375. So yeah this gun is quite good, it's very powerful especially considering that it's got this autoloader clip and the reload of the entire clip is quite short actually considering that it's got 6 shells in the drum. Still, I think this gun has got some quite important drawbacks, especially the penetration, which is quite a letdown actually, and you really have to get close to your enemies and attack their weak points or their sides and rear to be able to penetrate them reliably. A problem with the 1375 is that you have to unlock the upgraded tracks to be able to mount the better gun because otherwise you will be stuck with this gun here which is not very good at all as it only gets 108 millimeters of pen. And also it's very important to obviously mount the engine upgrades as the light tank and lives or dies by its speed. So what stats have we got left? The turret traverse speed is 46 degrees per second which is very very good and will easily allow you to keep your gun pointing at enemies if you're for example performing a carousel maneuver. The view range is 390, which is exactly the same as on the WZ-131, the tier 7 Chinese light tank, and it allows you to do some very good spotting. It's above average because the average tier 7 view range is 370, so 390 is very good. However, if you think of it, this tank will be thrown into tier 10 games, and if you get thrown into a tier 10 game, these, those tanks will have a bigger view range than you. However, you've still got very, very good camo values, one of the best, I think this this tank it actually gets the best camo values at tier 7 or maybe even the WZ-131 is a bit better but anyway the camo values are really really good on this tank and if you get camouflage on your crew and a camo net you will basically be undetectable for very very long if you're stationary. Also it's important to realise that this tank is a light tank and therefore keeps its entire camo value even while it's on the move so that's important too. It's got a very very low silhouette, it's very very compact so that's that means it can be very difficult to hit if it's moving very quickly. The signal range is 750 which is very good, that's, that's average tier 10 signal range so that's very very nice. And these stats basically mean that this tank can perform quite a few different roles. The way I like to play this tank is I try to passive scout for maybe the first 5 minutes or 4 minutes of the game and then when the game is kind of developed and all the enemy tanks are engaging, heavy tanks for example from my team, I try to flank round and get at the rear of enemy tanks and then just unload into them and really really wreck them. The most important thing when you're driving these French light tanks with the autoloader is to stay until the mid till end game because then you can really just clean up on the battlefield and just really hammer shells into softened up weakened 
enemy targets and basically claim kill after kill after kill. Also, in some maps, like for example steps, when the center is not guarded because the enemy team basically is divided up and some of them gone down the left flank, some of them down the right flank and none have stayed behind the middle, you can basically run down the center, kill the enemy artillery and then loop round and attack enemies from the rear. That's really good. Also, these French light tanks are very good at distracting enemies. That means, for example, if your teammates are having trouble progressing at a flank or are getting stuck, you can loop round and distract enemies by basically appearing up behind, appearing behind them, putting some shells under them. Even if you don't severely damage them, then you can still distract them and pull their attention away from your heavy tanks and they can maybe break through. So what equipment can you mount to enhance your performance? Now. There's a lot of equipment that you basically want to mount in this tank. It can't mount a vertical stabilizer and also can't mount a gun ram because it's an autoloader. However, the toolbox is quite useful on this vehicle, especially if you find that you're using it more as a damage dealer rather than a scout. Also, coated optics or binox are good, and I would definitely get one of these two. It basically depends on whether you want to play this tank as a damage dealer or a scout primarily. If you want to use it as a passive scout, I would get the binocular telescope. If you want to use this tank as a brawler, get the coated optics. Also, you definitely want to have the enhanced gun lane drive, as the aiming time of 2.3 seconds is quite good, but still, as this tank can't, can't mount vertical stabilizers, the gun lane drive is quite important to get your aiming time down as aiming time is very important in light tanks. Then also camo net would be a bad idea if you want to passive scout and improve vents are good as well. So basically you want to have nearly every piece of equipment on this tank but you've only got three slots. So if you want to use this as a passive scout I would go for vents, the camo net and binox. If you want to use this tank in an aggressive playstyle, I would go for the coated optics, vents and the gun lane drive. So yeah, the choice is basically up to you. I, vent, I went with vents, camo net and binox. I haven't got binox installed on this tank right now, I'm not quite sure why. But uh, that's the setup I went with just because I find myself in many situations where this tank performs very well as a scout. But nevertheless, this tank, as I already pointed out, is sometimes really wasted in the role of a scout and could do a lot better in the role of a damage dealing, uh, brawling, flanking kind of vehicle. As for crew skills, the fact that this is a light tank and you can keep your camo values while on the move and also that it gets very very good camo values in the first place due to its very low silhouette, I would definitely get camouflage on the entire crew in this vehicle because it will just really maximise your performance and even when moving you will be able to really creep up close to the enemies before they spot you and if you learn to really use your camouflage values to your advantage uh, with a 100% camouflage crew, this tank will just be amazing. So yeah, definitely get camouflage for first. Then I would swap camouflage on the commander once that reaches 100% for 6th sense, because 6th sense is really important on light tanks, especially if you want to cut passive scout. Then for second set of skills, I would get brothers in arms on the entire crew. And after that, for third set, I would retrain camouflage on your commander. Then for the driver, I would definitely get clutch braking. Clutch braking is really important on these French tanks. You could also get off-road driving, but I would prefer clutch braking. It's quite important. And then on your gunner, I would probably go for safe storage, as this is also your loader. Or you could get snapshot, but I think safe storage is actually quite important as having an autoloader that's ammo racked is a real pain in the ass. So yeah, safe storage or snapshot for choice is yours. So now that I've been babbling on in the garage for ages, I bet you're excited to see some gameplay about this vehicle. So let's head out to the battlefield and I had so many great games in this vehicle that it's really hard for me to choose the games that I'm going to show you. But yeah, let's just head and see what I've got. So I have chosen three games to show you and this is the first of them on Malinovka. And uh, these three games are all going to showcase different ways to play this vehicle. And this game is going to showcase the AMX 1375 in a kind of a scouting gameplay. And uh, as you can see, the clip is reloading quite quickly, so we've nearly completely reloaded already. 
and I'm telling my team in chat that I'm going to go and scout. Now you can see that this is a tier 9 match and this is really what you have to expect from the matchmaking in your AMX 1375 when you're playing it because yeah it just gets the scout matchmaking and can face up to tier 10 tanks. So I'm going down this kind of valley here uh, next to this river and coming up here, and this is my favourite scouting location of Malinovka. This is a bush you can all, nearly always use in every kind of situation. As you can see, I'm not using binoculars yet, which is a shame. Because if I had binoculars, that would be even better. The way it is now, I'm behind this bush, my camel net is act activated. And as you can see, I'm scouting all these enemy tanks and getting all the spotting damage for the kills and hits scored against those vehicles and the secret when you're passive scouting is never ever to shoot your gun that is really really important if you fire your gun all your camouflage values nearly drop to zero and enemy tanks will spot you quite quickly so you have to be very very careful as you can see nearly all the enemy tanks have popped off my radar again which is a shame but I'm just staying here, keeping calm and waiting. And as you can see, all that damage inflicted to those tanks up there has all been caused by us. And right there, all the snipers from my team lined up. There's a very aggressive T25 slash 2. He's soon going to come to regret his actions, as you can see. And yeah, that's all the damage, all that damage is spotting damage done by us. And as you can see in chat, I'm always uh, hitting the T button to request fire at enemy tanks to make my team concentrate fire, focus fire, and thus kill enemy tanks quicker and more effectively. But at the moment, there's no target spotted except for that KV-3 and he's behind cover. <coughs> so I decide it's time to move forward a little bit get to a new bush location here but I still can't see anything by the way I apologize for my hoarse voice at this point I'm, I'm just I'm I've got a cold I've always got a cold at this time of year can't be helped okay I guess I could dress more warmly but I hate dressing warmly so I see I've been spotted because that guy starts shooting at me so I quickly take out that t25 slash who although I don't pick up the kill uh, the 25 AT. T25 AT gets it. So I draw into cover here and wait till I re-stealth, which should be around now. You can always tell when you re-stealth because then enemy tanks drop out of your vision too. And now I take up my scouting position again. And that was a very, very close escape there. I nearly didn't survive that one. And I'm really thinking about shooting at that guy, but I don't because I don't want to reveal my position again. And my teammate finishes him off. Now I'm requesting fire at IS-3, but there's not much of him showing and I don't think my teammates are able to hit him. And as you can see, the score is A-2-3 and basically my team is just absolutely obliterated all enemies here. So I don't think there are any enemy tanks left here right now except for IS-3, so I decide to be very aggressive and advance. Now I know there are still a lot of enemy tanks up here, somewhere over there. But uh, I'm not really concerned about them at the moment because I know that they haven't got the range to see me when I'm down here. Still, I'm being quite cautious because of that IS-3 who might spot me and he can one-hit me. So I have to be quite careful. So I'm using these bushes to mask my approach and try to spot the IS-3 without him being able to spot me. But when I can't see... Ah, there he is. Okay, okay. He probably has seen me. Has yes, he has. He's, he's coming towards me. Oh, he's going into cover behind that house. Now, my plan is to kind of draw him out of his cover and uh, lure him towards me. Uh, so that... Now now I'm trying to blast away his cover there. And he's coming, so I have to quickly retreat. But he's driving away, which is strange. But he's he's aiming his gun at me, so... Yeah, now he's, now he's turning back, so... He's probably coming at me now, so I have to be very careful. But I'm hoping that you can see I've got piled like 
my, my teammates are all coming over here. They're over here like the Louvre and so on. So I'm just going to retreat and let them finish off on IS-3. Well, he's coming for me and I really do not want to front on engage an IS-3. So, oh, oh. And you can see my teammates are just doing really good work here. So I decide it's time to loop round and try to take that guy out. And I can't pick up the kill because the IS-8 gets him. So now I'm going to look for RT and there he is. So I'm going to stop. Put one shot in. And there you can see the power of his autoloader clip. But again the Louvre finish him off before I can get him. So now it's just basically uh, about cleaning up the last enemy targets, but our team's capping, and yeah, we've basically got this in the bag. And basically, if you get into a game on Malinovka, a standard battle on Malinovka in your light tanks, you've basically just won, because if you go to that bush location there, you can just really, really wreck the enemy team by passive scouting. And yeah, now we've nearly capped out, and yeah, we win, obviously. So that was a really, really nice game. Although we didn't score all that much damage and didn't really get any kills, we did really well. So let's quickly look at the after game stats. So here's that game. We got 51,238 credits and 1,291 experience. We picked up a patrol duty medal and a scout medal, which is really nice. And down here you can just see the list of all the tanks that we spotted and who we uh, did spotting damage to. Uh, if we look at the team score, we can see we got the second highest experience score of the team after the T-54, although we only managed to do 288 damage. If we look at the detailed report, we can see we fired 7 shots, of which 2 hit, and 2 penetrated. Those were the 2 shots that hit the GW Panther. We did 288 damage in total, received 2 hits, of which obviously 2 penetrated due to our bad armor. We received 630 potential damage, leaving us on 270 health. We detected 11 enemies, that's nearly the entire enemy team, that's really, really nice. We only damaged one enemy, that was the GW Panther, and we managed to pick up an amazing 5,655 spotting damage. That's just what you can achieve with this tank if you get into a good situation like I did there in Malinovka. That is, that's an insane amount of spotting damage. I mean, I've done better, but still that's really, really nice and I was really happy to get that. And I really hope that game showcased for you how you can use this tank as a passive scout. I would never recommend to active scout in this tank just because it has not got that insane speed that allows it to do that, but it's quite well suited for passive scouting due to its good camouflage values and quite good review range. So feel free to do that if you've got uh, Binox, for example, that's a really nice choice. And I hope I could showcase the passive scouting for you in that game. So next I've got a second game for you, which is probably a bit more exciting than this, because there's quite a shootout in it. So that's head right in. So I'm really sorry guys, but something went wrong with the replay file once again as nearly in all my reviews, and it didn't save correctly or something like that. And anyway, I can't show you the game. So I'm really sorry for that, but I've, I have still had a third game made up for you, thankfully. So there'll only be two games in this review. I'm sorry for that, but it can't really be helped, and I hope two games will be enough. Anyway, this game is quite nice too, and it's, it's a game that should showcase how the AMX 1375 performs in platoons. Because that's something I really forgot to mention in the garage. This tank in a platoon of three is just unstoppable, really. Because the autoloader clips combine, let's see, we've got six shots each, there are three of us, so that makes 18 shots within 10 seconds, and each shot makes about 100, uh, does about 133 damage. So that means that altogether we do about, I'd say, 2,000 damage within 10 seconds. And that's just really, really good. And the fact that we are so fast and difficult to hit really makes us very, very dangerous. And that's something you really have to watch out for. If you see a, um, a platoon of three AMXs on the enemy team, you should just really watch out for those guys because you might think, oh, they only do 133 alpha damage, but they've got 18 shots, and that is something you should really be afraid of. Now we encounter an object 416, which is the kind of enemy that an AMX 1375 really likes to face because it's very 
badly armoured. Now I decide to go back to cover because I don't want to get hit by that um, object 416 and that means that I by mistake get, uh, put a shot in to my pal and my friend General Denny takes that object 416 out. That's just the kind of thing the AMX platoon is really good at. If you can engage enemy tanks that are really really lightly armoured and all three of you engage them at once then you will just really really devastate them. Now the French artillery got a shot into me there knocking out my gunner and my commander I think so I use a med pack on my gunner and the problem with the commander being knocked out is that he's also my loader and my radio operator that means that quite a few functions are uh, not quite up to the best at the moment in my tank. Now what you see is doing here is we encountered a KV-5 there and basically with our penetration which is not very good we didn't really want to engage a KV-5 because even from the rear we've got quite slim chances of penetrating a KV-5 actually so we didn't want to engage that guy and instead we decided to uh, go round and attack from the other side or kind of from the center because probably that KV-5 is now thinking oh there are three AMX 1375s and they're just gonna rush me probably and try to kill me but I've got good armor and we'll be able to take them out but um, he'll be quite surprised hopefully when we pop up on a totally other end of the map at least that's our plan and that's a really really nice thing about these French light tanks they are so fast that you can really really do these kind of things, zip around that the map, pop up at other sites and really really bleed your enemy here and there and you know just basically fight a guerrilla warfare style. Now an ELC AMX appears but I'm not really one I'm not really all too keen on wasting shots on him because yeah he's a very very difficult to hit target. So now I'm going for that ARL. I do not know why that shot didn't hit. But my second shot hits and right here you can see my two friends just really chewing up that ARL. That's all my two friends. That's just how good an AMX platoon actually is. So General Denny secures a second kill on the ARL. And we move on. Now as you see this A line is very very badly protected if we move away. Because there's only a medium tank and the artillery left there to protect. So we basically cannot abandon this flank. We have to stay in range. And we spot an enemy artillery here. This is the British tier 6 artillery. And <laughs> I really wanted to ram that guy. But uh, General Denny gets his third kill on him. So yeah. And <laughs> I <laughs> that was quite funny the positioning of that artillery there. Uh, anyway. We're on our way to the enemy base, but we still have to watch out for that KV-5 because we can't really... Well, if we... It's a difficult decision we've got to make here. Should we rush the enemy base and take off the RT? Or should we go for the KV-5? And I think we decide here to go for the base because the KV-5 is a really, really dangerous opponent for us AMXs because it's got a very good rate of fire. He can basically two or three hit most of us. And... Uh oh, what's that? Oh, oh, that's a ch okay. That's only a Churchill seven. He should be easy prey for us because he's very slow. He's got weak side and rear armor. So let's head in. Still got three shots left, and there we go. I pick up my first kill in the game. Now I reload, and that's one thing I forgot to mention for garage. This tank has got a very, very low ammo capacity. As you can see, I'm down to my last clip of armor-piercing ammunition. After that, I'll have to fire APCR ammo, and I've still only got 18 shots left. That's not a lot. You can really easily run out of ammo in this tank. It's not as bad as in the uh, AMX 12T, but it's still not very nice. Uh, over there, you can see the KV-5 is pushed through to our base. Now, that's not very nice, but we'll just have to take that. And uh, now we're going for the RT. So, let's see. Where is Mr. RT? There he is. I track him. And finish him off, screwing my second kill. And General Denny's on four kills. Basically, we've killed six enemies here and really carried our team through. So now, there's only an IS-3 and KV-5 and a T-32 left. And this is still quite a dangerous situation because 
Uh, we've only got one tier 8 tank left on our team. However, we decide just to cap it out because, uh, well, we have uh, three of us and we don't really want to just oppose all of those tier 8 heavy tanks. And the score is 12 to 10 still, but we don't want to take any risks, so we just cap and win. So, yeah, I hope that really showcased for you what you can achieve with AMX 1375s in the platoon. And it's not only the 1375, it's with all those tanks. Like, it's also this also applies for the AMX 12C, the 1390, the Lorraine, and the Batshot. All these tanks are amazing when they're played correctly in a platoon. And I hope this could just showcase for you what exactly you can achieve. So, let's quickly check out the post game stats to see how well exactly we did. So we managed to get 2,239 credits and 1,652 experience from that game. And as you can see, our platoon finished off quite well, with General Denny being the best on the team, Redwood Forest the third best and me the fifth best. So yeah, I didn't perform that well, you know, I got 500 experience and did 700 damage, got two kills. But this was not only about me really, it was just about how this tank performs in a platoon and I hope this game just really showed that. As you can see, our platoon, except for that IS-3 and our artillery really, just carried our team through this game and without us, probably we wouldn't have won this game. If we look at the detailed report, we can see that we fired 21 shots, of which 10 hit and 9 penetrated, which is quite nice actually. Uh, we dealt out 768 damage, we received 1 hit and that hit also penetrated, that was the artillery hit I think. Uh, we received 950 potential damage, which is quite a lot, that means we must have received a tracking shot or something like that. Also, we uh, damaged 3 enemies, destroyed 2 and got 72 spotting damage, which is not all that much, but you know. Uh, we also picked up 19 base capture points and travelled 3.32 clicks. So yeah, that game, it wasn't the best in the world, but you know, it was just about the platoon game and I hope it showed that very well. Now for the summary, let's quickly head back to the garage and then we'll be done. So, the AMX 1375, all in all, I must say I enjoyed playing this tank. It's not my favourite tank of the game, but it's quite decent. It's just like the AMX 12T, only a lot better. And it is quite a lot of fun, especially if you play it in platoons. And yeah, it's very versatile as I already pointed out and generally if you like light tanks of autoloaders you will feel right at home with AMX 1375 and it's definitely a worthy stepping stone on the way to the bat shot. Now I'm only missing about 3000 experience till I can unlock the 1390 and I'm really looking forward to the 1390 because it gets this 90mm gun which is just simply amazing it seems. So I can't wait to get that but the 1375 I must say I enjoyed it at times, I had a lot of good games and and I really can recommend this tank, it's quite a nice bit of machinery. So I hope you enjoyed this review, if you did consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel and I hope I see you out there on the battlefield or in one of my next videos, maybe one of the 1390 videos. So see you then and bye bye.